I think it's important to note that we should not get lost in the offense, the handling of the quarterback position, KOC. I briefly mentioned this last night, but I regret not going more in depth than I did. I didn't last night, but I'm going to do it right now. What should not get lost is the recognition of greatness that is defensive coordinator Brian Flores. He deserves his flowers. He's exceeded all expectations by miles. Think about where they were last year, 2022, the Vikings defense, second worst in yards allowed, third worst scoring defense. And I was saying to myself, as well as on this channel, that as far as expectations going into this year, even with a guy who's as well respected and clearly knows what the hell it is that he's doing, a guy like Brian Flores, that to expect any sort of a 180 turnaround, to be in any category, top 10, top 5, I would say, oh, you're crazy. This is going to take time. This is going to be two or three years before you see significant results, even though we all understood that there's a chance that he's going to take a head coaching job or at least have those opportunities in 2024. This thing is going to take time. And you look at the results, it's been nothing short of remarkable. 2023, the Vikings have a top 10 defense in yards allowed, fifth ranked scoring defense, seventh in red zone scoring. The last 12 quarters, the last three games played, one touchdown allowed. You look at the personnel that he has to work with, a patchwork defensive line, relying on an undrafted rookie, albeit should have been drafted. And this isn't hindsight. We were saying this in real time. Some of us had this guy in our mock drafts. How did Ivan Pace Jr. go undrafted? Still, Brian Flores is relying on an undrafted rookie to man the linebacker group all by himself at cornerback. You had a big free agent signing, but he's been hit or miss. He has his good days as well as his bad a second year, fourth round pick, a third round rookie. That makes up his cornerback room right now. This man has taken top ramen and made one of the greatest cuisines that you've ever seen. To the likes of which Gordon Ramsay would be proud. He, if he chooses to go down this path and explore it, he will have Brian Flores, his pick of the litter, talking about head coaching opportunities. There's already two vacant jobs for next year in Carolina and in Vegas. I would say maybe Chicago. I'll say definitely Washington, especially with a new owner, not just with head coach, but GM as well. A new owner, they're going to want their own guys. Maybe the Chargers, maybe Buffalo, if they can finally get over the hump. But if they don't, maybe they look at Sean McDermott in a different light. And I mentioned this during the live stream last night. As far as the hypothetical scenario, it's not going to happen because with Kevin O'Connell, you got to give him his third year before you make any decisions. We have to be fair here. But also the reality is if they do end up drafting a quarterback in the first round, he's going to buy himself an extra year 2025 because then the argument is you got to give him at least two years to work with this young quarterback. But in a hypothetical situation to where, okay, the Vikings decide, KOC, we're moving on from you, Brian Flores, you're the head coach. We don't want to lose you for anything I was all for it, but then I mentioned this on the live stream last night as far as the Miami Dolphins. Austin Jackson, their right tackle, just recently signed a contract extension, and Tua Tagovailoa, the quarterback, went up to the podium and said, I paraphrased last night, but I want to give the direct quote. Tua Tagovailoa said, talking about Austin Jackson and his new contract, Quote, to sit in those meetings, have things told about you that you know aren't true, but they get planted in your head and have the media on you. I'm very happy for him. I took those quotes as, all right, team meetings. Who else 
are in those meetings besides the players and the coaching staff. Is that a subtle jab at Brian Flores? I found that very interesting. But then that same night, Thursday night, the game, Patriots versus Steelers, Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's on the game day coverage with Amazon Prime. He said, quote, Flores, same New England way, he was broken, talking about Tua, he was broken from Brian Flores, the way he treated him, the way he coached him. And it's one thing to say, all right, Tua, maybe he's just super biased. And of course, we want to protect b Flow, right? Because he's a Viking right now. So any sort of negativity that goes towards him it's easy to be like hey something clearly is wrong with you but then with ryan fitzpatrick it's like all right he was there he was teammates with tua in 2020 with on the miami dolphins with brian flores as the head coach and going back to that hypothetical scenario b flow is now the head coach koc is gone I was saying during the live stream, after seeing those quotes, eh, I don't know, I'm a bit hesitant. Some guys are better off as defensive coordinators. You look at D'Amico Ryan over in Houston. He's a Shanahan guy, comes from the Kyle Shanahan coaching tree, and he acts like it. He's a, a player's coach. He rallies the team, gets them hyped up, even though he's a defensive guy. Brian Flores comes from the Bill Belichick coaching tree, and he acts like it. He is a bit of a hard ass, but in doing more reflection last night and this morning, staying with the concept of being fair, who's to say that who you were three, four years ago is the same person right now? People change. People change all the time. People deserve second, sometimes third chances if they can prove that they are not who they were before as far as the bad things. The great things, keep that going. But any sort of negativity, how did you learn from that? How did you grow from that? And I would say it is something that he should get his opportunities and he's going to get them. But I think it is something, if you are a team interviewing Brian Flores, it is something that I would want to bring up and say, hey, these things were said about you. We just want to know that you have grown from that situation. That's all we want to know. And as long as he can prove that, I mean, the defensive players on the Vikings, they love this guy. But I feel like he's going to have to address that in interviews. And as long as he can do it, he deserves every chance that he gets. He deserves to pick wherever it is that he wants to go. Brian Flores has done a hell of a job in Minnesota. It's night and day defensively. Shout out to him.